Now that we've cleared our throat of any ramen, perhaps we could go somewhere interesting like a pre-Columbian mound builder site. Let's go. Okay, folks, for today, I'm going to take you to a place called the Spyro Mounds. It's a prehistoric archaeological site in eastern Oklahoma. Now, something of note is that it is very close to the runestone. And if you didn't see that video, I'll put a uh, link in the description down below and you can go check that out. He's been watching, she's been watching me. I'm not gonna get you. Just, just looking at you, that's all. She walked right up next to me and didn't notice me until it was too late. I think I kind of spooked her a bit, she ran off. But there, there's deer everywhere out here. So the museum that they have here is actually pretty cool. A majority of the artifacts you're gonna see in there are actually re replicas. The reason being is that during the 20s and 30s or so, uh, grave, grave robbers like to dig up these mounds and take pottery and what other valuables they could find. But um, there are a few a few artifacts in there that have been found, have been recovered from various private collections. Uh, they're worth looking at. I'm gonna walk on out here. They've got a large, extensive trail system where you can actually walk out and see the mounds up close, the, the surviving mounds, what's left of them. We'll check that out. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that is called Round Mountain and it was used for several thousand years as a uh, i would call it best probably a navigational landmark it can be seen for miles around uh, the interesting thing is is that there is a rumor and there's no truth I, I don't know if there's any truth or not to it but there is a rumor that that is actually a burial mound it's on private property and the person that owns it won't let anybody excavate it. We'll fly over it with the drone. So they are very serious about keeping treasure hunters out of here. Uh, they even have a sign when you walk out the door that if you see 
an artifact because sometimes erosion will expose them not to touch it not to pick it up anything like that just to just to let them know okay so you can see here these are actually two mounds and the reason they're not tall like you'd expect them to be is because they were dug up and excavated they were the first two mounds to be excavated you just barely tell that one right there but this uh this right there was once somebody's home. There had been a house that sat on top of it. Now, along with the house that sat on top of, uh, particularly this mound right here, um, underneath it, there were at least 38 human burials that occurred here. So, bury your body, build a layer, build a house. I like running around this time of year because there's less snakes. Once again, the mounds look like they do basically because of grave robbers. Okay guys, so this would be Craig Mound. It is the only mound out here that was reserved solely for burials only. They believed um, that there were roughly about a thousand different community leaders that were buried here. Uh, because the looting got so bad, the state of Oklahoma shut down the commercial digs in right about 1933. Uh, what bodies they were able to uh, recover were exhumed uh, and scientifically, I guess what's the word here, excavated, I guess that would be the proper term to describe it. They believe that the people who inhabited this area are the ancestors to the Caddo and Wichita people who still exist today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some pictures of what this place would have looked like back when it was still inhabited. So the elite leadership of the city built their houses up to the north of this location and we'll head up there okay so here are some of the more well-to-do people's mounds in the city here now you have to kind of remember that these mounds were built up and then they were flat on top originally where in the houses would sit on top of these some this was one of the other ones that was majorly looted and there were some really really neat artifacts recovered from it uh, that are now in the uh, museum at the University of Oklahoma. So this is one of the few areas where you're allowed to go up on top of one of the mounds. And we're going to do that real quick. So this area that I just walked through just now uh, would have been considered the plaza. And it was religiously significant. This is where everybody would gather for religious sacrifices, you know, things like that. Uh, the, the winter solstice was a big thing. In fact, the mound house on top of there would have lined up directly with the winter solstice. So the sun was very important to these people. These were actually uh, believed to be sun worshipers. And I just got to walk through their house. Kind of cool, huh? Okay. So I'm going to stand up here, guys, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but there are areas that are mowed, straight lines in the grass. And they all come to a point on top of the mound we just walked over. So what do these represent? Winter solstice, equinox, summer solstice all in a perfect line with this burial mound. Absolutely amazing, folks. They would have came together right here. Okay, guys, that is I think it's gonna be all from the Spyro Mounds location. 
very interesting stuff, especially if you're kind of like into pre-Columbian history like I am. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.